Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. You fire some guys, some assistants. I consider them lower-level guys. They don't pick the groceries. How do you make that kind of a move? And you've been in tough situations before as a head coach. What's happened, Jamie, is uh, a coach uh, looks for that hard-nosed, tough guy, the camaraderie, the team playing together. I'm describing Jamie here. <laughs> and and uh, the front office, I can remember here in 77, we had the best defense in the history of football. In the history. No one's ever touched it. And they cut all three defensive linemen because they said they didn't have enough ability. They didn't ask the defensive coach. They didn't have the ability. They had the heart. They had the spirit. They had the toughness. Somewhere along the line, toughness and physicality has to come back into your evaluation. I'm the only head coach, and Jamie knows this, that refused to go to the combine because I've never seen a game played in underwear. I want to see what you do with pads on. And sometimes... Our evaluators can't evaluate anything that isn't on a wristwatch, that isn't in underwear. The guy with the the best standing broad jump, I realized, was the first guy I cut. He didn't want to hit anybody. Nothing changes, Jamie. (laughs) (laughs) We got Jerry Glanville with us on the Rick and Jamie Show, ringing in the new year in style with the legendary coach. More with him next on Sports Radio 92.9. The game. Welcome back to the Rick and Jamie Show on Sports Radio 92.9, the game from the Kia Studios in Midtown. You can follow us on Twitter at Rick and Jamie 929, and we want you guys to check out our Hawks. They're winning even without Al Horford right now. They're taking on Golden State tomorrow at Phillips Arena, 730. Grab your seats with no ticket fees at Hawks.com. We have the legendary coach, Jerry Glanville. Uh, once upon a time, coached the great Jamie Dukes. And, and you had to be a good coach to get something out of Jamie. <laughs> As you I, found out on the radio station. Yeah, and I'm, I'm liking these interactive live reads uh, that, that Jamie has today. Uh, uh, coach and Jamie, you guys are like a comedy act. It's hilarious. I love it. Um, so, Coach, I know that you want to talk about Georgia and Mark Rick. And as we start the conversation, you can take it anywhere you want to go because we know that you have boundless opinions. But last week... Uh, We talked with our great audience, or maybe it was earlier this week, um, and and I contended that Mark Richt is too strict to bring a championship to Athens with with suspending players for big games. So do you agree with that? And then give us your overall impression of where the program is. I think you probably have to be there on the ground floor to know what you don't get to see and what he does handle. Uh, As a head football coach, uh, your job is to keep the bus going down the road. And when you get a breakdown and a kid does something wrong, uh, you have to repair that bus. A a head football coach has to change the tire, fix the motor, uh, jack up the engine as you go down the road. So we hear about the things that are in the media that maybe you didn't like he did. We maybe don't know, and I'm not. I don't know this either. He maybe did three other things which are pretty smart, pretty intelligent. But but the question is, as it pertains to Coach Rick, is that. See, I just think it's on. He's on cruise control now. Um, there is no pressure to win there because nobody's putting the pressure on. And I, when I say win, they're winning ten games a year, and that's great. Uh, but he's got his peers, you know, who are, are are in the hunt for the national championship. And Georgia, the last couple of years, they got the SEC championship. So I guess you could say that. But it just seems like there's no rush. As an example, they're going to trot out this kid um, Hudson Mason, and he's a nice piece, but. You know when a guy is just somebody who's a caretaker as opposed to opening up for competition because you need somebody special because you got to cover up the warts. How many defenses have you had that you had to cover up the warts? Jamie, you saw them all. (laughs) I I played with a lot of (laughs) them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, And see, what what probably is the most upsetting thing to me is the poor Georgia fans don't realize uh, the quarterback they just had was very, very, very special. So when you have a guy of that caliber, a guy that can do all the things that he did, you have to win and appreciate him and and turn him loose and let him play. And uh, I was so sad. By the way, that knee injury probably cost him $10 million. At least. Uh, At least. That's a $10 million knee injury. Yep. But when you have a guy like that, Jamie, you have to go on and be something really special. Because that guy's not going to come around all the time. But but the thing about him, though, what, what, in the moment, and this is kind of the same thing we've seen with Peyton, too. With all of the, the, the great records that Peyton, he will get his five, fifth MVP. 
when it really mattered, and with Dion, we were talking about this the other day, everybody's not prepared for the moment. And that's where, for him, his record of 2 and 15 or whatever it might be versus top 25 opponents, he didn't excel in the moment. But I think, and this happened to Peyton and, and, and it happens uh, to, to Tony Romo, mm-hmm. they make the moment and the defense gives the moment back. <laughs> I mean, I can't tell you how many times uh, uh, Tony Romo, uh, they come down there and they make the play to win the game, but they left 14 seconds on they still don't win the game. And this was happening to the quarterback of Georgia. Against the big people, he was scoring 42 points. Well, come on. Somewhere along the line, the defense has to hunker down, they used to say. I no, think no, they lost. Was, no, that's because the coordinator was too busy trying to get an NFL job last year. He didn't care what happened <laughs> last year. So when he finally, you know, said, so, okay, I guess I have to come back here. So it was too late. There was no preparation. Wow. You know. But I, I, I think really what's, what's happening, uh, uh, a long time ago, a guy tried to hire me a Minnesota Vikings. Old silver hair coach. Uh, you could go coach my guys right now, coach. Do you remember the old coach? They're from, looking for from, one from Jerry? Can, from Canada. Uh, who? What was his name? He was from Canada. Burns. He's not from Canada. Is no, no. Before Burns. Les Steckel. No, before Les Steckel. Bud. Bud. Bud's from Bud's Canada. From, Bud was from Canada. He won the oh, Great that's, Cup. Oh, uh, that's why I didn't yeah. guess it. I didn't know he was from Canada. Yeah. He, he anyway. He told me one time. He goes. Uh, uh, he, by the way, he used to watch Doug Shively coach out on the side. Mm-hmm. In the old days, we'd be on the same sideline together in Detroit, so mm-hmm. we'd be five feet away from each other. And he said, uh, you're going to be very, very successful. You know why? He goes, I have no idea. He goes, because <laughs> easy, watch this, Jamie. This is going to solve every problem you, you, you thought about today. All right. And Bud Grant told me, easy riders don't last. What? Think about everybody, everything you're talking mm-hmm. Easy I've had people tell me they uh, people in the state of Georgia tell me they hate Spurrier because he hollers at his players. He's just won eleven games three years in a row, but right. he's hollering at his players. Right, Jamie. What if Saban, what if, what if they'd have fired me out there with you every time I hollered at a guy? Yeah. Jamie used to say, "You're hollering at him, Coach, you're in, and damn, he needs it." <laughs> uh, easy riders. That's a good one. And that was from Bud Grant. Yeah. Bud Grant had a little knowledge. Well, 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 well Mark's an easy rider, and he's lasting. That's what I was just going to say, Coach. So how do you explain that? What is this, 13 years now with Mark Rick? No national championship. Yeah, but those things, I get that. Because, like I said, it took Bobby 20-something years. So I don't necessarily use that as the barometer per se. But he just seems very comfortable. Okay, here's the two words we got to write down for today. Mm-hmm. We will change the state of Georgia today with two words. Mm-hmm. Buzzard luck? Not that. N- we got buzzard We got better here. two words than that, right? Okay, all right. First word you're going to love because you were part of it. Mm-hmm. Attitude? Mm-hmm. And the second word is adjustment. Mm-hmm. So when things don't go awry, I hate when a guy says, we're going to go back, we're going to focus, we're going to try to get where we – I've heard that a thousand times. Adjust. Make the adjustment. Each coach, when you have your butt kicked, you have to make the adjustment. What's the adjustment that Coach Rick needs to make and you got to make it? What's the adjustment? Fire some people. What's the adjustments the Falcons got to make? you got to make the – Personnel. Jamie, at halftime, nobody adjusted like we adjusted. Mm-hmm. Am I right? Yeah. And we we were a, 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 sec- we were a second-half team. We were a second-half team because we said, we got it all figured out. Here we go. But we also were, Jamie, the best attitude team in football. Yeah. And that's that's to you and your players. Mm-hmm. And That wasn't me, hell. I, I, I never hit anybody. Well, but, you, but you didn't have those kind of guys if they weren't those kind of guys. I always tell people all the time, I had more fun playing for Coach because – you know, he let I call, I said he let men be men. You know, everybody gets it's so fixated on before the game. Everybody's got that fake, uh, <laughs> uh, fake. Uh, you know, the game face. Folk, yeah, all that. Be, if you didn't prepare Wednesday, Thursday, that's right. Friday, you weren't going. All the fake intensity you wanted <laughs> wasn't going to help you. So that's why the locker room. You know, people thought, well, that's why you guys are no, no, because I prepared Wednesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, starting with tape. And you prepare during the week. So that's the reason why you play well. You don't play well because sa- sa- Saturday night or Sunday before the game, you're sitting there and you start meditating and thinking kumbaya. Yeah. How about how about this? Maybe you, say, you must have gave a great, Jamie will love this, pregame talk. I said, my pregame talks were nothing because yep. my pregame preparation was, I said, a pregame talk. If I gave Jamie the best pregame talk in the world – and he goes out there, and that nose tackle hits him right in the mouth on the first play. He don't care about my pregame talk. 
He knows he's got to line up and fight and win this personal battle. And be willing to, Jamie. Mm-hmm. Here's the key that we don't see in me. And be willing to force your will on the enemy. Jamie will tell you, I told the team, we will not look at the scoreboard till there's nine minutes in the third quarter. At that time, let's see if we're ahead or behind. We are going to force the will on the opponent. That's the attitude. Yep. At halftime, make the adjustment. And God bless, I had, I had some good people we could do that. We got Jerry Glanville here with us on the Rick and Jamie show from the Kia Studios. And uh, what, what did you see from Hudson Mason yesterday, Coach, in the loss to Nebraska? Did it, give any, uh, did it give you any confidence at all that he will be the guy next year to take the dogs to the next level, even get them to 10 wins? My, you know, your hair didn't go on fire, and that's probably not fair to him. Uh, uh, you, you, you know, you hate to, you hate to say uh, he, he won't be. I think you got to give him, you give him a shot. I, I don't think you crown him. I don't think you bring him in and put him in the chair. I don't think you bow down and kiss the ring. I said, by the way, you can compete for the job. Let's go to work. You got to be careful when the guy's around you a long time. He knows what you want to do, so you feel comfortable. And Jamie knows this better than everybody. I like this guy because he knows everything. This other guy has skills and ability that can do things that can overcome my coaching. You'll love this. They thought I was the greatest passing coach in football in the Houston Oilers. They thought I was the next Air Corey. I was maybe a genius. I couldn't even spell it. My word, <laughs> my, my rule is don't say a word you can't spell, so I can't say a lot of words. Uh, Warren Moon fumbled a snap against Kansas City. Bend down. They fractured his scapula. Mm. So he, he's out. In four weeks, they thought I was the dumbest coach around. It was the same scheme, Jamie. Yep. It was the same place. Guys can't execute. you got to have – what could Warren Moon do? He could throw the ball through a car wash and not get the ball wet. Yep. So all of a sudden, my stuff was good. Yep. You with me? Yep. And, and, and so, he knew where he was throwing the ball. Oh, yeah. That's a big part of it, too. But there's a guy – you can get infatuated with a guy that knows everything you want him to do. If he only does, Jamie – what I coach him to do, he's not good enough to win a lot of games. Wow. So he's got to do something I can't coach. Right. And then I become a better coach. Hence, your, your favorite player in college football is kid, Florida State. Jameis Winston. Uh, watched him in the pit game, first game. Oh, you, you like him better than A&M quarterback? Yes, by okay. a lot. Okay. I, think, I like the A&M quarterback, I too. was at Peach Bowl. Did you guys yeah. go to the Peach Bowl? Mm. No, I had to worry. I, I was there live, baby. Mm. It he's was special. awesome. So uh, you bring up uh, Johnny Manziel. Jamie and I have a gentleman's agreement. If Manziel goes nine down to one, I win. If he, if he gets drafted 10th, it's a push. If he gets drafted 11th and beyond, Jamie wins. Who do you like in this little wager? Here's the deal. I'll, I'll, I'll mess up your bet. He's the fourth quarterback drafted. Didn't say player. Because okay, will four quarterbacks be, be taken in the top 10? <laughs> How about Matthews? Matthews' son could be one or two. Mm-hmm. I had his daddy. He was he was the best guard I ever coached, the best tackle I ever and coached. And best center you ever coached. And how about this? I, I had to go down to Bud Adams, the owner of the Houston Oilers. I said, if you'll give him $100 a game, I'll have the best long snapper, <laughs> and, and we, can, we can get rid of a player. And Bud says, I'm paying him. I'm not giving him an extra 100 He wouldn't give him $100 to make the long snap, Jamie. This guy was awesome. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Uh, we're talking football with Jerry Glanville and having a blast here on the second day of the new year. You're in a good place here from the Kia Studios. Coach, got to go. Show. Appreciate you joining oh, us, Oh, you're coach. out. I, I'm out of here, but you two. I got too comfortable, Coach. And guess what? I'm, on, I'm down to two friends. That's all I got left, but I got the right two. <laughs> the right here, baby. I love you, Coach. Thank you for stopping by. More to come on the Rick and Jamie Show. Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Sports Radio 92.9 The Game.